defender suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious light. Forever seated. I'm Marcus Nelson. Uh, and welcome to Hope Christmas. And do we feel a day again? Great can it end for an arm guy? See that can for boy to hunt it there. Our grandmother will wear a brave scarf. I did the Galatia Monia a gear an atmosphere Venus. But we can hear he can organize by Bill. In December 2021, NASA launched the James Webb Space Telescope at a cost of $10 billion. It's the largest optical telescope in space and powerful enough to analyze distant star systems in the ongoing search for other potentially habitable planets. My raglen SpaceX Mars, or Thindaplagirthong SpaceX Star, Gyda bwriad o sefydlu trefedigaeth ddynol hynangynhaliol ar blaned mawrth erbyn 2029. Why is so much time, money and energy being spent on trying to find other distant places to live? Why are we trying so hard to go somewhere else? What's wrong with where we are? A draws y byd, bu yn deimlad dwm o bywyd ar y blaned hon i gyd yn rhan o un stori. Dywedir i Theatr y Glob a sefydlwyd yn Llundain yn 1599, ac sy'n gysylltiedig o William Shakespeare ddefnyddio'r motto All the world plays the actor. Mynegodd Shakespeare hyn yn wych yn ei ddrama As You Like It. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players they have exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts. A bead, 
llwyfan, bywyd, drama, ein rhannau fel actorion, lle mae pob cyfnod o fywyd yn rhan o'r ddrama sy'n datblygu. What kind of play is being acted out upon the world stage? Many have said it's one with a very poor script. Life is as tedious as a twice told tale, vexing the dull ear of a drowsy man, said Shakespeare in King John. As Macbeth famously said, out, out, brief candle, life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. I was born in Southampton. We went to church as a family. Um, my dad was a church children's minister and he was a salesman. I went to school. I wasn't a, I wasn't a straight A student by any means. I saw school as an escape. From the age of five, I was abused until the age of 16. It was hard because I would go to Sunday school and I would hear all about how Jesus and the, about Jesus, how good he was. And even as, you know, I'd hear that, but then I'd go back to reality. So my life was constantly in a battle. By the age of 11, I was diagnosed with depression. But at the age of 16, um, my friends stepped in and they encouraged me to go to a Christian camp. And I was pretty ignorant to what God actually did on that day. I put my hand up looking for a way out and he reached out and he accepted me. So from the age of 16 to the age of, let's say, 34, I was, my life was, I'm a Christian on a Sunday. I was a youth pastor in a church and God was doing amazing things in that time. We were seeing young people getting saved and that side was great but outside of that, as soon as I stepped out of church, I had no sense of belonging. I didn't accept Jesus could ever be my father because my my experience of a father was bad. So to accept that God would ever be a good, good father, I struggled with. I got married for the first time when I was 21. And everyone in the church I was serving warned me that it was not right, it was not of God. But in my pride and my youthfulness, I decided that I knew what was right. But unfortunately, what I did was I placed myself into an abusive situation. I would, people would ask me if I was a Christian, I would say, yeah. I was still, if I picked up my guitar, played the odd Christian song, but I wasn't really connected. My idea of family was completely warped and distorted and my ability to receive love was based on performance. I had a nervous breakdown. Basically, um, I, my diagnosis was, so I had psychotic tendencies. I made three suicide attempts in, the, in that time. And the final time was in June 2010. I was given therapy such as CBT therapy and CAT therapy. But then in 2012, God broke through. I was nowhere near a church. I was nowhere near a Christian person. I was actually in my bedroom arguing with my wife at the time. And I was hearing voices and they were arguing me and challenging me. But then it just felt like someone turned a tap on inside my head. And I could feel water going through inside my, inside me and I felt, felt it flow out. As the water flowed out, every feeling of depression, anger left me. And that was in 2012. 
and by October of that year, my GP had taken me off my tablets. He said, there's something that's happened in your life. I can't put my finger on it, but you do not need these tablets anymore. I believe now people were praying for me, praying for my heart, because that's what ever I didn't accept at that time. That's what families do. They look out for you. It's like the prodigal son. The father was still on the gate looking for his son to come back. And he would have sent messages to his son, do you want to come home? Are you ready to come home? And I believe that's what's happened for me. People were praying for me, and God heard that prayer, and he gave me a gift of healing. We can live and all. Roedd teimlad ei ang y gallem adeiladu dyfodol disglair i ni ein hunain gyda'n hadnoddau ein hunain. Gyda thwf y chwyldrod i wedi anol, pallai glo a gweithfeydd dir, credwyd y byddai oes sair newydd yn dechrau. Roedd Cymru ar y blaen fel o wlad ddiwydiannol gyntaf yn y byd. Erbyn 1903, roedd meysydd glo Cymru yn cynhyrchu 61 miliwn tynell o lo bob blwyddyn. And then just one year later, on the eve of Britain entering the First World War, Sir Edward Grey, British Foreign Secretary, looking out of his window, famously remarked, The lamps are going out all over Europe. We shall not see them lit again in our lifetime. Yna, daeth y Rhyfel Mawr, yr Ail Rhyfel Byd, Erchylderau, siambrau, nwy ac aidolegau gwleidyddol, aidolegau gwleidyddol a ddaw o ddod ar nefoedd i'r ddeiar ar gyfer y ras ariaith neu'r proletariat. Nid nefoedd i lawr, ond iffern ar ddeiar y chosswyd. The very techniques and processes in the 19th century expected to produce a better world have in fact put the planet on a highway to climate hell with her foot on the accelerator in the recent words of the General Secretary of the UN. With the big dreams of the past having failed, we've been left to make the best of life by doing whatever makes us happy. If making the most of life is all there is, it isn't very much. Ychydig iawn ohonom sydd ar cynfas gwag yna y byddem eisiau mewn bywyd. Mae bron pob un ohonom yn dod i mewn i'r byd mewn ffyrdd sy'n golygu bod ein hopsiynau wedi cyfyngu gan y bywyd rydyn ni wedi cael ein geni mewn i. Nid cynfas gwag yw'r un a rydym yn ysgrifennu yn bywydau arno, ond un tywyll o fyd geafol. It's winter time. Winterfest never felt like it could be a holiday to capture the imaginations of people across the globe. What is there to celebrate about winter? Winter time is all about colds and lemsip, dripping roofs and grey skies, short days and long nights. Birds fly south and animals hibernate. Wrth gwrs mae sgio yn yr Alpau ac eistedd wrth ymyl tân yn hyfryd. Ond mae'r geiaf wedi cael ei ddefnyddio ers tro fel cod ar gyfer popeth sy'n anghywir a bywyd yn y byd hwn. O the long and dreary winter, o the cold and cruel winter. I lawer ohonom, mae'r flwyddyn gyfan wedi gorchuddio yng nghysgodion oer tywyll y geiaf gyda phrofedigaeth, unigrwydd, methiant a thor perthynas. As a youngster, I was told to go to chapel in the Welsh Valley, uh, and I went along and got nothing out of it. I met my wife in school in the sixth form, Linda, and um, she was a Christian. In fact, she grew up in a Pentecostal background. 
there were a lot of people in her family, should we say, who thought perhaps Brian was not the right person for Linda because he was not a Christian. But Linda, bless her, she still went ahead and we have been married now for 49 years. We married and we had two wonderful children and Lynn kept going to church and took the children to church and I played golf. There was no doubt there was more important things than going to church on a Sunday for me. So we were married for probably the best part of 25 years and I was well into my 40s before I even thought about uh, church. And the way it came around was um, Linda was asked, could our house host a Alpha course? I just happened to be there at home and I was going to make the tea. That was the plan. But the plan changed because during I sat in and listened to some of the Alpha talks and there were what people called spooky coincidences happening all the time because the vicar who was running the course at the time said, what's your situation, Brian? And I said, well, I'm a scientist. I need evidence. I need proof. And I'll never forget the words he said to me. He said, Brian, if you need proof, God will get that proof for you somewhere. And I thought, yes, okay. Uh, but during the Alpha course, the number of strange coincidences and things that were happening, it was as if God was knocking me on the head and saying, hey, I'm here, you just need to believe it. On one occasion, Linda said to me, will you come to church? And I said, yes, okay. Uh, and I thought, well, I better open up the Bible. I hadn't read the Bible. So I opened up the Bible and read a passage, didn't have a clue what it meant, went into church and, oh my goodness, the vicar was only preaching the same passage. And I thought, somebody's trying to tell me something here. And so I started getting these sort of experiences where I thought, there's something going on in my life. Didn't know what it was. And then I think people who've never experienced it would be shocked by what I said, but it was a physical experience. They prayed for the Holy Spirit to come on me. And I actually felt a powerful sensation of burning from the tips of my toes right to my head. And I thought, this is ridiculous. What's going on here? And in the end, I committed myself and gave myself to the Lord then. And I was, what, 45 years of age, um, married for 25 years with no need to be a Christian. Everything was good. Didn't have a drug problem, didn't have a drink problem, didn't do anything wrong. Decent husband. However, my life was changed from there on. And so from there on, I started getting really involved in church things and everything. And I think now I can see what I've been missing out all those years. And I think for people who have nothing in their life, when they're going through difficult times, they are very difficult times. And getting through it on your own with no faith, no support from anybody, without God looking after you, it's a difficult life to do that. And I went through a difficult time three years ago with, with throat cancer. I would never have got through that without the support of the church, no doubt at all. There was one occasion where three o'clock in the morning I was struggling, I didn't want to wake up. And I just prayed and I thought, will I get through it? I got through it. <coughs> the following day, Marcus Elbick, I said, I've been praying for you all night, Brian. There was a reason for me praying that night. And that was the time when I needed everything the most. And God came through.